In this video, I'll cover backing up Microsoft or Office 365 data to a Synology NAS using the Synology application Active Backup for Microsoft 365. I'll briefly go over why you should consider backing up your Microsoft 365 data. I'll then create a backup task using Active Backup for Microsoft 365. One requirement for Active Backup for Microsoft 365 is to register an Azure Active Directory application, and I'll go over that process as well. Finally, we'll view and restore backup files using the Active Backup for Microsoft 365 portal. I've been under the impression that when you use a cloud service like Microsoft 365, that you don't need to worry about your data, and you can leave it to the cloud service to take care of backups for you. According to Microsoft's service agreement, however, you should do your part in protecting the data you have saved in the cloud. I'll scroll down to the Service Availability section and highlight this paragraph which states, We strive to keep the services up and running. However, all online services suffer occasional disruptions and outages, and Microsoft is not liable for any disruption or loss you may suffer as a result. In the event of an outage, you may not be able to retrieve your content or data that you've stored. We recommend that you regularly back up your content and data that you store on the service or store using third-party apps and services. Clearly, Microsoft thinks backups are a good idea, and we're fortunate that Synology and their active backup for Microsoft 365 is available for us to do just that. I'll leave a link to Microsoft's service agreement page in the description below if you'd like to read through it further. I'm here in Disk Station Manager, and as a prerequisite, to creating an active backup for Microsoft 365 task, we'll need to create a shared folder where we'll be saving our backups. I'll do that by going to Control Panel, select Shared Folders, and create a new shared folder. I always like enabling data checksum for advanced data integrity when creating a shared folder on a BTRFS file system, so I'll check that option and finish setting things up. Next, I'll go to the main menu and start up the Active Backup for Microsoft 365 application. I'll click on Task List and click Create to start up the Task Creation Wizard. I'll create a new backup task, and on this screen, we need to fill in some application information, but we'll need to register with Microsoft first. This link goes to Synology's website where we're supplied with instructions to register an Azure Active Directory application for Active Backup for Microsoft 365. I'll leave a link to this specific page that I'll be referencing in the description below. Let's get that going, then we'll return to finish up the setup. To register an Azure Active Directory application, we'll need to use a Windows system, so I'm here on Windows 10. We'll be using a Windows PowerShell script provided by Synology to generate the information we need, so I'll launch PowerShell as an administrator. To allow us to run the script, we'll have to change the execution policy, and I'll do that by copying and pasting in the command provided in Synology's instructions. Next, we'll need to run the PowerShell script provided by Synology. I've already downloaded the script to my downloads folder, so I'll cd into that directory and run it. I'll select yes to install and import the NuGet provider, and yes again to install the modules for PS Gallery. I'll then need to supply a certificate password. At this login screen, I'll log in as the administrator for the Microsoft 365 domain that I'll be backing up. When the script completes, I'll be supplied with a tenant ID application ID, and a certificate file will be downloaded. All of this information will be needed when we set up the backup task. The last step we need to take is authorize the application in the Azure portal. I'll copy the URL that was provided and bring up the site in a web browser. I'll just need to grant admin consent and now we're set. We can now complete setting up the backup task in Active Backup for Microsoft 365. Back here in the Active Backup for Microsoft 365 task creation wizard, I'll enter in the information that is needed and that was just generated in the previous step. 
If all goes well, we'll be able to continue on to naming the task, select the backup destination, and select which users and what content we'd like to backup. In this demo, I'll just back up the drive, mail, mail archive, contacts, and calendar for my specific account. Enabling active backup for Microsoft 365 Portal is a good option to allow users to restore and export their backed up data, so you may want to select this option and adjust permissions appropriately. For this video, I'll be using an administrator account to restore data, so I'll leave this option unchecked. For Enable Auto Discovery Services, if you'd like to have new users, groups, and sites backed up automatically, you can adjust the options here. I'll just leave the default options as is. Next, we'll be able to adjust the backup and retention policy. I'll leave things as is again, with the default options being a backup done daily and preserving all file revisions. Everything looks good, so I'll finish things up and run the backup task now. Now that the backup task has finished up successfully, let's try restoring a file using the active backup for Microsoft 365 portal. First, I'll log into my Microsoft Outlook and delete this test email that should have been backed up when we ran the backup task earlier. Next, I'll bring up the active backup for Microsoft 365 portal, select my account under view role, and select mail under the services menu. I'll bring up the inbox and sure enough, the test email that I just deleted is there. I'll select it, click on restore, and choose the one mail in inbox option to restore this specific email. Here, we'll just need to confirm the restore and we also see the folder where the email will be restored. I'll click OK, and after the restore finishes, switch over to my Outlook again, refresh the page, and now we see the folder that was created in the restore process and the restored test email as well. Finishing up, I'd recommend that you consider backing up your Microsoft 365 cloud data and using Synology's Active Backup from Microsoft 365 is a nice option that really works well. If you have any thoughts on backing up Microsoft 365 data, leave a comment down below. Also, if this video was helpful, make sure to like it and consider subscribing to this channel as well. Thanks so much for watching.